everyone, it's Maki here. Do you like mobile armors? They are one type of weaponry featured in the Gundam series. In many cases, we refer to non-humanoid shaped weapons as mobile armors. Today, I will introduce a mobile armor that appears in Gundam Seed. Its name is Mobi Zero. It has a shape similar to a fighter jet, doesn't it? In the Gundam Seed series, there is a culture of referring to mobile weapons which have fighter jets as ancestors as mobile armors. This Mobi Zero is a mobile armor piloted by Moonlock Blade fighting alongside the protagonist. While its appearances throughout the story are limited, it has some really cool moments and memorable episodes. Let's explore the charm of Nobi Zero this time. Nobi Zero is a mobile armor developed by the Earth Alliance designed for combat in outer space. The model number TSMA stands for Theater Suppression Mobile Armor and mode signifies modified. It served as a prototype for the Mobius, which was later adopted as a standard mass production weapon. Watching its actions in the story, you might get the impression that Mobius Zero is an overwhelmingly superior unit. But this is due to its specialized armament and the pilot. In terms of the unit itself, Mobius is superior. Specifically, the Mobius' twin thruster units are influenced by the structure of mobile suits and exhibit high maneuverability due to the mobility of the units themselves. In contrast, Mobius Zero executes maneuvers like turning by firing auxiliary thrusters located throughout its body. As the war with the Zaft intensifies, Mobi Zero becomes one of the few weapons capable of competing with mobile suits. The Zaft seemed prey the overwhelming role as a weapon, but its sole weakness was its limited numbers. The Earth Alliance's Mobi is fought against him with multiple units, managing to destroy them albeit with significant sacrifices. Nobi Zero could execute tactics synonymous with coordinated action by multiple units while being a single unit. By utilizing its specialized wired gun barrels, tactics such as surrounding the enemy with gun barrels for concentrated fire or protecting the main body by attacking sin that approach the unit from a different direction were possible. However, using the gun barrels required extremely high ability. Operating the main body while controlling the four gun barrels was a significant burden for the pilot Moonlock Breaker, who appeared in the story, excelled as a pilot of Mobius Zero by utilizing the foresight enabled by a special ability, a kind in the Flake lineage. The orange attack executed by Mobius Zero and the gun barrels was extremely powerful and research continued in both the Earth Alliance and the Zaft as a result. A weapon called Dropgun was developed in the Zaft. The mobile weapon pods equipped on Chaos Gundam bear a strong resemblance to Mobius Zero's gun barrels in both design and function, highlighting the Zaft's interest in the utility of the gun barrels. In the Earth Alliance as well, a striker pack called Gun Barrel Striker has been developed and deployed in limited numbers additionally. A direct successor access appears in Gundam Sea Destiny. A subtle feature of Mobius Zero is that by detaching the nose section, it can operate as an entry craft for atmospheric entry. However, this function wasn't showcased in the story as it performed atmospheric entry by landing on the Archangel. Let's review. The armaments of the Mobius Zero actually during the production of Gundam C, the schedule was very challenging, leading to some instability in the settings related to the Mobius Zero's armaments. First, we have the anti-armor linear gun. Its key feature is the mechanism that accelerates bullets using magnetic force 
This helps alleviate barrel degradation more than other types of weapons. The characteristic feature is that the bullet does not come into contact with the barrel. Regarding its destructive power, there are multiple opinions in the materials. Some say it has the power to penetrate even the armor of battleships if it hits directly however Edman do cross. Who appears in Gundam Seed Stargazer has commented with the linear gun. You cannot destroy the armor of a Xenon Meshu attack at cross range. Edmund piloted the linear gun tank, not the Mobius Zero. It might be reasonable to assume that the linear gun mounted on the Mobius Zero has been upgraded. In the anime, it destroys the armor of a Zen and grows off its arm. In this scene, it's a simultaneous attack with the gun ball, and it's unclear whether this attack is from the linear gun. However, the bullet that hits the shoulder is a single shot, suggesting it is not from the multiple barrel gun ball. Also, there are scenes where attacks by the gun ball do not significantly damage the scene. Considering what has been depicted, it seems appropriate to interpret that it is a linear gun, enhanced for the Mobius Zero. There are also scenes where it destroys battleship armor and forces them to abandon combat, so it's undoubtedly a powerful armament from the perspective of the Earth Alliance forces. Next. Let's talk about the wired or range attack armament gun barrel. A representative armament of the Mobius Zero, the gun barrel can be detached and remotely controlled, allowing attacks from unexpected directions. This enables Mobius Zero to execute combination tactics with multiple units alone. The thrusters equipped on the gun barrel can be used simultaneously with the main body's boosters, enabling acceleration beyond that of mobile suits when all pyros are used at once. There are also multiple views. On the gun barrel in official materials, there is a description suggesting it's a beam cannon. However, in the story, it's depicted with a yellow light representing metal bullets, and there are scenes where it hits the face shift armor of the Aegis Gundam without destroying it. Also, small beam weapons were first practically by the GATX series beam rifle considering these facts. It is natural to think that the gun barrel fires metal bullets. This indicates how busy the Ani production site was. The utility of this gun barrel on the battlefield attracted the attention of both the Earth Alliance forces and the Zaft forces, the company Actane Industry, which had dealings with both forces, went on to develop the drop gun system to be operated by the Zaft forces. Additionally, in some games, it is depicted with a Vulcan gun built into the nose. This is a weapon that does not exist in the setting, however. There are cases where it is equipped with a Vulcan gun in the GE Generation series released by Bandai, which holds the rights to the Gundam series. This weapon seems to have room for discussion. The Vulcan gun equipped on Gundam has been a standard issue for the Earth Alliance forces for a long time. It wouldn't be odd if it were additionally mounted when operated by the limited forces on the Archangel of Coast. As mentioned earlier, it's not equipped in the official setting. Lastly, while it may not strictly be called a weapon, the wire anchor is also an essential equipment. It is used to anchor the unit by stabbing into surfaces like walls. It was used on the Archangel during atmospheric entry. However, Mulov Frege also used it for combat support. He used it to pierce enemy battleships down around and make a quick getaway. This maneuver is difficult unless one is an ace pilot. Even though the attack was successful, there is no time to confirm whether all the enemy's turrets have been neutralized. There are also depictions of the enemy's armor being blown off by explosions. There is a risk of the unit being damaged by colliding with the debris despite these risks. 
The fact that Lord Franklin was able to withdraw from the enemy ship and skate speaks to his remarkable ability. What role did the Mobius scene or play in the story? In fact, there was a very significant event that occurred before the story began. It was the lunar ending and crater battle fought between the Earth Alliance and the Zaft forces during this battle. The Earth Alliance deployed 15 Mobius Zero units to the battlefield, however, the Mobius Zero squad was used as a decoy to draw the Zaft forces. When defeat seemed inevitable for the Earth forces, they considered ways to inflict as much damage as possible on the Zaft. That's when they came up with the idea to overload the massive device used for melting rare metal containing ice. The runaway of this gigantic microwave emitter led to the explosion and collapse of the Earth Forces base, taking many Zaft soldiers with it. The name of the device used at this time was Cyclops. It would later be formally militarized as a self-destruct device and installed at the Earth Alliance's Alaska base. The Mobius Zero piloted by Moonlog Flavger was the sole survivor of this operation to cover up the blunder of destroying their base and taking many allies' lives. The Earth Alliance had quarters turned Moonlog Flavger into a hero. It is commonly known that Moonlog Brother was recognized as an ace pilot for shooting down five Jin in this battle. But the truth is that this was a cover-up by the Earth's Allied forces. It is a fact that he shot down the enemy, however. This truth was exploited as a pretext to glorify him as a hero. The nickname given to him then was Hawk of Endymion. Moonlock Flavegood is like this name given by the headquarters that took the lives of his comrades. He modestly rebelled by calling himself the man who makes the impossible possible. This phrase, added several times by Moonlock Flavegood in the story, was born from this incident. In the novel version of Sea Destiny, there is a scene where Neil Warnock appears in the scene, where Archangel and Manava confront each other in the orb and unconsciously utters the words, the man who makes the impossible possible. Although he would regain his memories as Moonlock Flavor a little later, this unintentional utterance also served as a trigger to awaken Neil Warnock's hidden memories. While the Mobius Zero's role concludes in the early stages of Gundam Sea, the spirit of this mobile armor continued to support Moonlock Flavor far into the story's future. Also, the reason Moonlock Flavor, who once experienced betrayal by the military, could act promptly during the explosion at the Alaska base was due to this incident. The safe survivor Moonlock Flavor threw away his helmet. This wasn't just anger at the betrayal that occurred before his eyes. The second betrayal and the regrets of his past comrades were flaming up inside him. The Mobius Zero also plays an active role in the story of the TV Ami, supporting the inexperienced Kira Yamato. It fought valiantly against the four ace pilots of the Daft forces in red uniforms. It demonstrated its prowess by damaging enemy battleships, forcing them to retreat and rescuing the Stry Gundam captured by the Aegis Gundam as the battle shifted to Earth. It gave way to the fighter Skygrasser. Moonlock Flavger would later play an active role in space again, but by that time, he was piloting the Stry Gunnam, so there was no role for Mobius Zero. It's not widely known, but in other narrative developments, there are scenes where the Mobius Zero plays an active role again. Gundam Seed was part of a real-world corporate strategy, with the story unfolding across multiple media. While the overall flow was the same as the TV anime version, there were works with different details. This is an event from the manga serialized by Mizuho Takayama. 
After being rendered combat inactive by Raul McQuaid's Providence Gunnam, Mulok played the soldiers again in Mobius Zero. He rushes to Kira Yamato, who is struggling against the Providence Gunnam, and restrains it using the wires of the gun barrel. The time to hold back the power of the state-of-the-art Providence Gunnam was very short. Lu Lok played the calls out to Kiro Yamato, shoot the enemy without worrying about me. Along with Kiro Yamato's agonizing scream, the beam cannon of Freedom Gundam carries both Providence Gundam and Mobius Zero. This manga, of course, was officially licensed and published so it is an official publication. However, among Gundam series fans, there is a notion that what is shown in images holds the strongest authority in official settings. Regarding this Sunrise and Yoshiyuki Tumino, the creator of the Gundam series, have taken the stance of welcoming fans to have their interpretations. How do you interpret it? Even with this development, if the cockpit of Mobius Zero was thrown far away by the impact, Mulok Flavga might have had a miraculous survival. Do you remember earlier? I mentioned that Mobius Zero has a feature that allows the nose to detach from the main body for atmospheric re-entry of course. How to interpret all the information is left to each fan. Did you enjoy the commentary on the Mobius Zero when the Gundam Seed series first aired, featuring Mobu armor and flying all range attacks right from the beginning of the story? It was greeted with great surprise. It's one of the events symbolizing Gundam Seed, which was produced with the goal of being the Gundam of the new century. Then, in the Witch from Mercury, the protagonist Gundam Gundam Ariel executes a no-range attack in the first episode. The possibilities carved out by Mobius Zero have influenced later Gundam works as well. Additionally, the design significantly influenced by Mr. Yomoni Kimi Tushi, who was in charge of it also plays a crucial role. The swordfish from the Ami Cowboy Viva closely resembles the Mobius Zero, sharing common features such as spherical parts and centrally mounted weapons. Both Mobius Zero and swordfish are designed by Mr. Kimi to she. What aspects of the Mobius Zero do you like? If you don't mind, please share with me. Finally, I'll convey a secret mission to you country we. The Earth Alliance are engaged in combat with the top forces of the Endymion Crater on the moon. Congratulations! It has been revealed through aptitude tests that you possess excellent spatial recognition abilities. We grant you the honor of deploying in the state-of-the-art Mobius Zero, along with the skilled pilot Moonlock Brave that please press the subscribe button to start the mobile armor's engine. Press the like button to deploy, you soon encounter that sin. Please deploy the gun barrel by pressing the bell button. Don't worry, you can surely achieve victory with the headquarters guarantee it. Don't worry about anything and fight for the Earth. See you again in the next episode.